Rubber band powered planes are one of the simplest forms of powered flight. By simply winding up the elastic, lots of potential energy can be stored, which once released can produce sufficient thrust for flight. Now recently I bought this small foam toy plane that can be charged up in under 10 seconds to power a small electric motor. The way this works is it has a tiny supercapacitor inside that stores the potential energy like the rubber band, which is then used to power the motor for flight. But wouldn't it be cool if it could be charged up by hand? To do this, we need to build a hand crank generator to charge up the capacitor. So I started by 3D printing a rotor that I can mount some magnets to, with alternating magnetic poles around its circumference. And this rotor can be mounted to an axle with bearings, which allows it to spin. Then a coil can be made by winding some thin copper wire around a template that will fit perfectly between the two magnet rotors. So as the alternating magnets spin, the magnetic field within the coil rapidly changes, creating an alternating current, which shows up on the multimeter as a voltage. But to generate more than 4 volts, we need to increase the speed at which the rotor spins. So I made a housing for the generator which allows me to attach a gear to a crank arm. This gear ratio means I can put a lot of torque in at a slower speed and the magnets will spin at a much higher speed. And now I can generate over 7 volts. To increase this voltage even further, I wound 7 more coils and glued them to the centre bracket. Then they can be soldered with 2 in series and 4 in parallel to hopefully double the output voltage and increase the current output. The only issue with this current generator is it produces alternating current due to the alternating magnet poles. So I soldered up some diodes to make a full bridge rectifier which will convert the alternating current from the coils into direct current at the output. And now we can generate around 17 volts which should be enough for this project. By the way if you want to see more info about this hand crank generator I made a video on my second channel which has more information about how the magnets produce the alternating current and how the full bridge rectifier works to convert the AC to DC. I'll link it in the description below or it'll pop up at the end of this video. To charge the small capacitor plane I first disassembled the battery charger pack and used the connector to build an adapter for the generator. And then I can start winding up the plane as if it were a rubber band plane. Only this time it took just 9 turns of the crank to fully charge. Right, let's see how well this mini supercapacitor plane works. Just give it a quick charge. And there we have it, it's already at 3 volts. <laughs> Ready? And... Oh, that's going further than I expected. Right, I've given it a bit of uh, rudder trim to hopefully make it go in a circle rather than disappearing off into the distance. And let's charge up, see if we can get a decent flight time with this thing. Right, I'm going to try and film with the camera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good landing. It's really cool having this tiny plane charge up from simply turning a hand crank for a few seconds. But as you can probably see, the hand crank generator is far too overpowered for such a small toy. So let's make a bigger plane. This is a 3 volt, 100 farad supercapacitor. But what does that mean? Well, this is a lithium battery of a similar size, and although they both store electrical energy, they do it in very different ways. The capacitor can store about 0.125 watt hours, but the battery can store about 10 watt hours, which is around 80 times more. The capacitor weighs less than the battery, but is still awful in terms of energy density. But where the supercapacitor wins over the battery is its rapid charge and discharge rates, as it stores the energy as a charge between two conductive plates, as opposed to a chemical storage in a battery. This also means that the capacitor is far easier to charge, as a lithium battery requires careful management of charge current and voltage to prevent it bursting into flames. Whereas as long as the supercapacitor doesn't exceed its rated voltage, it should be able to charge from any electrical source, 
making it perfect for charging from the hand crank generator. Only problem is the supercapacitors have a low rated voltage of only 3 volts, so I'm going to use 6 of them. By gluing the capacitors together, I can solder them in series to increase the rated voltage to 18 volts. This does reduce the total capacitance of the pack, but the energy stored is now 0.75 watt hours. And having them soldered in series means it requires a balance lead to regulate the voltage of each individual capacitor to prevent any over voltage failures. They can then be packaged with 3D printed end caps and some heat shrink for protection before soldering on a power connector for charging and discharging. So now we have a super capacitor pack that weighs 166 grams and has the same energy storage as this 3 gram coin cell. But I bet this tiny thing would burst into flames if it were to match the output power of the capacitors. Let's build a plane around it. I started by modelling the super capacitors in Onshape, which is a cloud based CAD program that runs in your web browser. And this allows me to design an aerodynamic fuselage around the capacitors, which can be 3D printed, at least until the print failed. This fuselage is designed to have the motor mounted on the front, but the small surface area caused the print to detach from the build plate. Though at least I got the dimensions of the supercapacitors correct, as they fit perfectly inside. So I reprinted a new design with a larger nose area on the build plate, and it printed successfully. But currently this larger nose isn't very aerodynamic, so I made this cowling which creates a smooth transition between the motor and the fuselage, as well as hiding all the wires. I then installed all the radio control gear and speed controller for the motor, before squeezing in the supercapacitor pack which takes up the majority of the fuselage. Ok let's see if we can charge up the supercapacitors to run all the radio control gear and power the motor. So first of all plug in the generator and start cranking. Right, I've charged up the capacitors to 8 volts, which is just under half of their max rated voltage. Uh, so unplug the generator and then plug the capacitors into the motor controller and everything should power up. Now if I move the throttle stick, the motor should spin. Perfect, right, now let's check the radio control gear at the back. All the servos move fine. Uh, now what I want to do is check at what voltage the motor runs out because the servos and the radio control gear runs at a minimum of 5 volts. Uh, so if this runs and drains the capacitors lower than 5 volts, I'll lose control of the plane. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Okay, so this is the current voltage of the capacitors. And as you can see, they're draining down. Uh, it's about 0 0.01 of a volt every second or so which is just running the radio control gear. But let's put the motor on and see how quickly it goes down. Okay, it seems like the, uh, everything switches off when it gets to about six and a half volts. So the question is, do the servos still move? They seem to, which is good. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I'll have, so say uh, if we were to fly up really high using the motor and then it turns off at six and a half volts, how much time we'll have to uh, glide back down before we lose control. We just dropped below five volts and my uh, radio's freaking out because it's losing signal. So yeah, 5 volts is definitely the minimum voltage limit, so I think I should be able to keep control of it before it lands, <laughs> fingers crossed. For the wings and tail of the plane, I decided to reuse what I built for my previous air powered plane project, as they are lightweight, efficient and took a while to build, which will save some cost and time for this project. These simply clamp into the new fuselage and the cables can be attached for the tail control. Finally, I attached a folding propeller to the motor to prevent any damage when landing, and it's ready for a test. So let's just plug this into the generator and get spinning. Oh, 
Right, unplug the generator. Super capacitor plane, first test flight. Oh, perfect. It's got plenty of power. I can feel the power already reducing though. It feels like it's going to cut out any second now. Let's try and gain some altitude. Actually, I'm going to cut the throttle here just to be safe and see how well it glides. Well, the propeller's still spinning. Oh, well, that went better than I expected. These conditions are absolutely awful. <laughs> right, let's charge it up and give it another test flight, I guess. And throttle up. I might see how high I can get it on this flight. And then we can just glide back down. Okay, the motor's just died. It is a bit annoying that windmilling of the propeller, which is increasing the drag of the plane a lot. Let's try and get one more circle in, then we'll come in for a landing. Nice. That folding propeller is definitely useful for, well, saving the propeller and the nose. <laughs> Works really well. So with a hand crank charge time of just over two minutes, this supercapacitor plane can sustain constant powered flight for just under two minutes. Therefore, with some slightly faster cranking and some better flight conditions, it should be capable of a one-to-one -one hand crank to flight time ratio which I think is pretty cool. That was perfect timing. <laughs> it just ran out as soon as it got just in front of the camera. I find it fascinating to apply theories into practical applications, like in this project, but building projects like this isn't easy. However, Brilliant can help if you want to learn math, data science and computer science interactively as well as thousands of other lessons from basic to advanced topics. I've always believed that the best way to learn a topic is to apply it to something where you can see the results, and the interactivity of Brilliant's lessons really help with achieving this. Like learning how your phone uses timings from satellites to locate your exact position on Earth, or even learning how to code a Mars rover, Brilliant has you covered. So if this sounds of interest to you, then you can get started for a full 30 days for free by going to brilliant.org forward slash Tom Stanton. And the first 200 people that sign up will get 20% off a premium annual subscription. So go check out Brilliant in the link in the description down below.